Hi, it's Tony here from A&E Construction. You're watching Build with A&E. We've done loads of brickwork. What we're looking at at the moment is a Flemish garden wall bond that's shown on the drawings. Or the other alternative, what we can do is uh, we can do a soldier course that might look a little bit more decorative and we feel as if it might look a little bit nicer on the build. But obviously that would be something that you can get your thoughts on in the comments down below. It uh, would be quite interesting to see what you guys think. You can see with the course you've got three stretchers. This house is a three stretcher and header bond. So that means that's a stretcher here. So you've got one, two, three stretchers and then you've got a header and then three stretchers and then a header and then obviously it comes to the finish here. Also as the bond goes through you can see you've then got a closure here and that is basically represents the house which is what we've got there. If you look at the house up the top up here you can see we've actually matched the bond here to match this corner detail here that we're going to build up. So when you look at the house the header and the closure all match through beautifully. So all in then unison with the build itself. Inside here you can see we've got all the damping now and we put all the pods in. Now these pods you set them with the laser level. We're setting to the top of the pod 220 mil to that point from damp and damp is this over here where damp is that's where the, the sill of the door will sit on top of this and we then put some damp on this and then flap it down on that so then we have a continuous damp all the way down what we then do is from this point here we measure down 220 mil we then literally then set all of these pods which we've got here and what we do we turn them clockwise or anti-clockwise that allows us then to pull the concrete up, self-compacting, self-leveling concrete to this level. As we pull the pods through, we then take these bricks out because we don't want to leave these bricks in, do we? As you can see, we've sealed everything up. We've got then some water that's from the sinks going to go through. It's all connected to a combination drain here. It's a shared manhole, so that means it's storm as well as foul mixed together because it's an old Victorian building. Modern buildings now have a dual, so they have storm on a separate run and they have then also foul on a separate run, but being an old Victorian, this is a lot different. Uh, there's no soak away in this building here at all because you need to be five meters away from any building. Alice is doing a great job of the brickwork and block work as you can see here. And that's all coming along nicely now. So uh, we'll get everything ready and ready to go. So as you can see guys, uh, we've got RS Concrete Pump here, they're doing the floor slab for us. What we do basically, we have a bag of cement mixed with water, we pour it in, it just helps lubricate the line. Oh, right, okay. on, these, on these rubbers, the flexibles, they absorb a lot of the moisture out of the concrete, which creates blockages. So if we put a bit of grout through first, it lubricates the line, helps concrete flow through a bit better. Cool, so you just yeah. use a bag of cement and that's all yeah, you're doing? just a bag of cement, mix it with a bit of water, nice and creamy, the creamier the better. And then you just literally, we disconnect it on this clip here, pour the grout in, and then just... So you pour the grout at this point yeah, here just then, here, just we, here, we yeah. disconnect it here, pour the grout in the pipe, reconnect yeah. back up just before the concrete goes in the hopper. Cool. And then it just helps lubricate the line, helps concrete flow better. Easier, awesome. causes less blockages, a lot better. Matt, in the dappling that you're doing at the moment, is that just like literally doing a final level and knocking the last bits of air out, yeah, is it? It's just the final, as the finishing touch, smooth all out, gets all the bubbles out, any oxygen trapped in it. And then, uh, yeah, it should be good to go in the next few days. And this liquid concrete, self-leveling, self-compacting, what's it actually called, Rich? Top flow horizontal. It's a water-based curing agent. Just prevents the top of the uh, concrete drying out too quickly. Is that what it does? Yeah, that helps prevent the plastic shrinkage and cracks. As you can see guys, it's all sprayed up and done. All the way through, that literally took about an hour and a half to do. A lot quicker and easier and now you know the whole substrate's lovely and flat. 
Hi guys. We've got our temporary refund, so Alex can crack on with his brickwork. He's doing a lovely job here. We're about to get the lintels in today to carry the brickwork across here. We've got a soldier course going across, which will then carry the windows which go up and across the roof. So, plumber's here today to move the hot water cylinder back into that corner in which will be the airing cupboard. We've got another joist to put in across here, three joists to reinstate across there because they were in a pretty sorry state before with a bad bit of trimming across there so that needed replacing. Also we've worked out the weight of the bath including water and one or maybe two occupants is going to be about 500 kilos. So there's going to be four joists, one, two, three, four, which are going to need doubling up with some 8 by 3 timbers alongside those. So what we need to do is cut out some pockets, which are done up here already. So as you can see, this joist here is actually sat in the wall. Yeah, we need to replicate that with our new joist. So there's going to be one alongside here and then the rest of the ones, like I said. So yeah, that'll be my, my job for the day. Joe's here. Hi, Joe. He's going to get everything moved across for us nicely so we can get all this pipe work out of the way because all these pipe runs here need to be moved so we can get these new joists in. Because obviously as you can see there, they're drilled through the joist there. So if we're going to put new ones in, they need to be out of our way. So as you've probably seen, we've got this joist in up here and the floor's in, yeah. Uh, there's the new joist in there. As you might notice, we've actually wrapped the end of the joist in duct, okay? The reason for this is to stop any moisture transfer through, which will eventually obviously rot the timber. So we wrap it in damp like that just to protect it. Keep it nice and protected. So what we do is we use some of this damp here like this, cut it to end, and then it is wrapped around the outside of the timber and like I say this just protects the timber then from any rot or anything like that any water ingress in the end a little screw in there just to hold it in place so you can pull it nice and tight round there we go beautiful little parcel at the end just to seal it off nicely So yeah, there you go, just like that. And then what will happen then is, that end there will sit into that wall and like I say, it will stop any damp or any water ingress coming through. Keeping that joist nice and protected and preventing any rot. Hi Pete, thanks for the demo. Hi John. <laughs> Hi guys, it's a rainy day here in Leamington and we're inside getting these reinforcing joists in. Hi Pete. Hi John. <laughs> so, as you can see, we've put the pockets in. There, 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 all the way across here. What this does is give us a bit of manoeuvrability so we can slide these joists in because as you can imagine, these joists are obviously at a certain length which means that to put them in, you need to put them at a bit of an angle. So what we've done is knocked all these bits out here, which then allows us to move stuff around then, so we can get our joists in nicely. We're just currently drilling the holes and coach bolting these as we go along. That way then everything's nice and secure and tied together. So there's gonna be no movement whatsoever there when we put the bath upstairs.
So I just wanted to have a little chat with you about these. These are restraint straps or tie downs or lateral straps. There's many names for them, but it's basically a restraint strap. What these do in this case is fit on the wall like so. So what they do at the top there, they fit over the wall plate and then they're screwed down over the top and then they come down and are fixed into the walls as well with uh, screws and plugs. What this does is holds the wall plate down tight to the wall. In a normal build where we're not on top of steels like you can see it there, uh, it would actually be put down on a bed of muck. Yeah, and then these straps then hold that down to the wall, which in turn hold the roof down on top of the wall plate. In extreme circumstances, the, the wind could actually cause the roof to lift up. So these actually make sure everything's held down securely and in place and there's never any chance of that happening. When they're used for lateral straps, what that means is where a gable wall, which would be a pier, the straps will go across the top of the rafters and then they'll be fixed into the wall, which gives extra support to the gable. Again, in strong winds or strong weather or anything like that, it will stop any movement or anything like that. Like we've done here, we've put two in each section, as you can see, across there and across there. The normal regulation is one every two metres, but obviously as we've only got small sections of wall, what we've done is just doubled up on each one just to make sure, because you don't want there to be any issues with any warping or anything like that, so it holds it all down nice and tight. So that's about it for this edition of the project series. You've seen us pouring the concrete slab on the floor, well the first concrete slab on the floor. You've seen Alex's lovely brickwork going up outside and you've seen us getting these joists in in preparation for the bathroom upstairs. We can't really do much more down here for the minute because we're waiting for windows to be made and fitted. All these windows around here and this, uh, this orangery area here. So yeah, like I say, that's about all we can do down here. So the next edition of the project series will be us focusing on getting the bathroom done upstairs. If you've liked this video, make sure you hit that like button and while you're there, subscribe to us as well and turn on your notifications so you'll be notified every time we post a new video. If you've got any questions about anything that we've done or anything else that we've done in any of our other videos, then leave a comment in the box and we will get straight back to you. Take care, see you next time.